Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you a really cool tool that allows you to calculate a median value in an Excel pivot table without any array functions. In fact, you can use this method to do almost any calculations you want in a pivot table. The other great thing about this method is that it works great with large data sets, unlike array functions which tend to slow down after just a few thousand rows. I do have another video out there where I do this with an array function, so definitely go check that one out too if you're interested. But anyway, let's dive in. So if you're somebody who wants to just skip straight to the solution, go ahead and check out the description of this video. There's a link in there and you'll learn how to add a median value to a pivot table in a few seconds. But if you want to learn maybe something new and check out the rest of this video, then definitely stick around. I'm going to be doing a little bit of recap and talk about some other things along the way. So here we have some order data and we have an order date, a part number, and the quantity that was ordered. And just to see what we're talking about here, if we want to create a pivot table with this data, we just go to the insert tab, hit pivot table, and click OK. And this will start a pivot table for us. If we want to look at some aggregate values of the order quantities, we can look at the order quantity by part number, for example. So this is the total order quantity per part number. We can change what values that displays. So we can do a sum, we can do a count, um, we can do a few different things. But this list is pretty limiting if you're looking for maybe some more advanced functions. I mean, I wouldn't consider median an advanced function by any means, but it's not included in the default um, pivot table calculations. Pivot tables can't actually aggregate by more than these functions. So there are ways around this. And in the last video, if I just close this, in the last video, I showed you how to aggregate by a part number using an array function. So I'm not going to go through and do that again. Check out my last video if you want to use that method. That method is just fine for smaller data sets. In fact, it's, I don't know, it's maybe a little bit easier if you are okay with Excel formulas and everything. But especially if you have a very large data set, that's not going to work so well. Array functions have a tendency to really slow down the calculations of your worksheets. Especially if you're using multiple array functions or you have more than a few thousand lines, your worksheet calculations or refreshed rate is really going to decline. A better alternative to the array function method is to load an add-in that actually comes standard in, I believe, all Excel versions after like 2010. So what we do is we go to our options here and click on add-ins and then go to com add-ins here and hit go. And then you just want to make sure that this Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel box is checked. So this is, like I said, an add-in that comes standard in um, Excel versions after 2010, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But this gives us the ability to use DAX functions, and DAX functions are pretty cool. I just more recently learned about them myself. They're actually the language that Microsoft Power BI, which is like this data query reporting software, it's the language that that program uses, and now they have it built into Excel which is awesome because it's pretty powerful. This is gonna be a super, super simple example of what DAX functions are capable of. Okay, enough blabbering. How do we do this? So first of all, we have our add-in added and we can just go to insert pivot table just like we normally would. The only difference is when you have the power pivot add-in loaded, you'll get this checkbox and it says add this data to the data model and we can hit okay there and it'll create a pivot table the same it normally would, and we can actually just drop in part number and order quantity into our values. This is the same exact pivot table, but there's some things going on in the background here, and I'm not gonna get into detail on that. So the way that we do this, we can actually create custom functions that will aggregate by whatever row context we put in here. And we do that again using those DAX functions. Once we have our add-in loaded, then we can just right click on table two, hit add measure. We give the measure a name, so we're gonna say, order quantity median. All right, now I hope you're ready for some really complex syntax. Watch this. If we type in M-E-D-I-A-N and click order quantity and close parentheses and make sure we have a number value selected here. That is how simple it is. Hit okay there. And instead of using this order quantity, we can take this value here and drop it in there. And boom, there's our median values. What's cool about this is this function will work just the same no matter what filter context we give it. So if we drop in date, it still gives us this order quantity medium. So it works the same as our normal pivot table um, functions that are built in where we can do aggregate functions in this value except for we can make them custom. And like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to DAX functions. It's pretty cool stuff. So I recommend checking it out, but super simple example of how we can maybe add a little bit of extra functionality to our pivot tables. So for those of you who skipped ahead really quick, 
Here's how we do it. File, options, add-ins, switch this to com add-ins, go, and we want to add this Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. It's available in years 2010 or newer. And what we do then is we just select our data like normal, hit pivot table, and check this box, add this data to data model. This allows us to use DAX functions, which is a Power Pivot um, reporting language used in Power BI, Microsoft Power BI. And what we want to do is add part number just like normal, but instead of dropping our order quantity over there, we right click on the table, we hit add measure, and we use this super complex formula. You hit median, order quantity, close out parentheses, pretty much the exact same thing as an Excel function. Forgot to give my measure a name, and we'll call this order quantity median. It's that simple. Boom, we have our measure, drop it in, and those are the median values by part number. So hopefully you like this trick as much as I do. If you enjoyed, please like and share. As I said, this method is pretty versatile, so there's a good chance I'll be revisiting this in the future. That being said, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any other data analysis tools like the one you just watched, plus much, much more. Everything from engineering software to data analysis, plus plenty of other engineering tools.